Gouging Fire is a brand new Dragon and Fire type Paradox Entei form that was released in the Indigo Disc DLC. But he's got a shield on his forehead and he's not afraid to use it. It has its own signature move called Burning Bulwark that's essentially a protect that when the opponent makes contact with it, they get a burn. It's important to note that it does not block status moves though. Overall, Gouging Fire has some amazing stats with its base 115 attack, 105 HP, 121 defense, and 91 speed. It can effectively work as a more bulky tank option, but also has access to Dragon Dance and stab options like Flare Blades to become a scary sweeper. Ladies and gentlemen, we are out here grinding everything new from the Indigo Disc DLC. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second, and I promise you won't regret it. I do plan to check out pretty much every new buffed Pokemon, returning Pokemon, and new thing from the Indigo Disc. So, go ahead and make sure you stay updated, and let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so, my opponent is working with Rain today. Rain teams are always scary, and it's definitely going to be a challenge. So, they decide to lead off with the Toilet Bowl Bird, and I toss out the Golurk. So, this thing sets up the Drizzle. Making it rain on the granny in the back, for real. If nobody supports me, at least granny's always here for my Wi-Fi battles. Anyway, at this point, I decide to go for a trick as they just go right for the turn one tailwind. The, the speed is extreme out here. I want to go for the trick essentially because that's going to give this thing a choice band, but also it's going to take away the damp rock. Now, Golurk ain't have any business holding on to this wet ass rock, but what it does is now when this thing switches back in, it's not going to have the 8 turns of rain and instead just have 5. So if I can limit the amount of rain that's going to stick around, that's that's going to be nice. So that thing is now choice banded and they're going to end up switching out and they decide to go right into the hitter, which is going to be that Barrascuta. So he comes in for free as I go for that Stealth Rock. I want to try to punish switches as much as possible, but now I find myself in a spot where uh, old Iron Giant is not going to have the greatest time here. I don't have a lot that wants to switch into you know, a rain boosted attack from this thing. So I let him just stay in, go for that liquidation, and that is gonna take care of Band-Aid. I'm gonna need maybe an extra Band-Aid, but that's fine. This thing did what it needed to do. I was able to kind of hinder what the Pelipper can go for and also set up the Stealth Rock. So now I get a free switch and I decide it's time to bring in the absolute beast. I got a big ass shield crest on my head, gonna activate that booster energy. And at this point, I can kind of, kind of scout out a little bit here. I'm gonna go for that Burning Bulwark and they actually end up staying in and going for an attack. So what that does is makes my little crazy ass head all nice and red, and you're gonna have a bad time if you touch me. They do stay in, go for that liquidation. I believe this thing is probably choice banded, and since you touch me, now we're gonna get a burn. And that is extremely important uh, in being able to limit what their kind of one of their main physical attackers can do. So we get a solid burn there. Burning Bulwark is coming in clutch. This is so new, not a lot of people uh, are able to predict that thing. And this, this new Entei, is amazing. So, listen, here's the deal. I came in and I burnt my booster energy. However, this thing has a lot more that it needs to do in this match and I don't want to quite start to set up yet. So, I'm actually just going to switch into the Hydra Apple. Old Snake Apple comes in and I have kind of a free matchup here. If this thing's choice banned like I imagine it is, I can take attacks from it all day. Plus, um, I have a, a pretty quality matchup against a lot of their team. Not a lot wants to switch into the Apple. This thing has definitely got to be like one of my favorite new Pokemon. It's literally, it always makes a difference in battles. It's got really cool typing and hits so damn hard. So, they obviously have no business st staying in there. They're stuck in the liquidation and uh, we're keeping both Doctors and Barrascutas away with the old Apple here. So, they actually end up switching into Clodsire. Comes in on a Fickle Beam. I don't get the roll to uh, get the 160 base power Fickle Beam. Essentially, the way this move works is there's a 30% chance that it doubles in power. Uh, so, it's always worth going for, especially on a Switch. But... At this point, I'm just going to go for the Earth Power. I have the super effective damage, and I know it's going to be a nice little two-hit KO on the Clodsire, who is actually... Clodsire is essentially always a problem. It's, It could be, you know, Water Absorb, it could be Unaware, so it can stop sweeps easily, and overall, just uh, an annoying little, little poop fell over there. So, they actually end up going for the Toxic, and that's just basically because their team doesn't deal with the Hydrample that well, so it kind of puts me on a timer here, and at this point, I'm just going to go for another Fickle Beam, as... They actually end up switching, and they're going to bring right back in the Pelipper. Now, Pelipper expects an Earth Power. Um, I predict the switch and go for the Fickle Beam instead. And we also get the Lucky Roll for the All Out Attack. We bring out all the homies, and that is absolutely going to obliterate uh, that Pelipper. So that is amazing. That thing goes down. It was likely coming in on an Earth Power and then be able to hit me with a Strong Hurricane. And uh, it's good to see that thing gone. So now they have no ability to set back up the rain. And other than being poisoned, we're in a pretty good position here. So, on the free switch, they decide to bring in the Quaquaval. So, this thing has a couple different options it could go for. 
It does have coverage with the Ice Spinner, but I'm just going to stay in, go for that Energy Ball, as they do, in fact, go for that Ice Spinner, and that's definitely going to knock me out. So I didn't have a lot that wants to come in and take that. Uh, depending on what they go for there, they predict a switch, and they're in a great spot. So kind of make a bad play there. Down goes the Hydrapple, but I kind of did what I needed to do with that thing. And uh, at this point, I can freely go back into the Absolute Beast. That is the Mufasa. So... We find ourselves in a spot where they know the Burning Bulwark potentially is coming, and all of these things attacking moves are going to make contact. So I figure I could predict them to switch, or I could just go for the obvious play and kind of the safest one, which is going for our little protector. So I'm going to go ahead and heat up the old shield and say, hey, go ahead and uh, put your little toes on this, homie. I swear it will not hurt that bad. They do go for the Aqua Step, and uh, we do protect ourselves, and that's going to give them a nice, a nice little burn. So... Roasted Duck is now on the menu, and we've effectively kind of hindered what this thing can do as well. It has a Moxie boost, so it's sitting at plus one attack. Uh, so that's probably likely, likely why they stay in there. But uh, we make the correct play, and at this point, I can go for a nice little Dragon Dance. Now, the reason is, uh, I know that I can take an attack from this thing, and after a nice little speed boost, without any Swift Swim, we're going to be in a good spot with the Gouging Fire. So they just stay in, they go for another Aqua Step here. There's not a whole lot of options. does almost half to me as they get another speed boost here. Uh, but after Life Orb Recoil and Burn Damage, this thing is not going to have the greatest of times, especially because I do have just the neutral hit with that Dragon Claw. So, I'm sitting at plus one attack and speed, and I am going to be able to outspeed, and that's going to take care of the Quackle Ball. So, big threat out of the way, and we're in pretty good shape with the Ancient Ass Entei. But there is still one thing that is a huge problem, and that is this little jelly over here. So, listen, Ditto comes in. It's going to get that Imposter, which turns into me, copies my stat boost, so now this thing being Choice Scarf is actually going to be able to outspeed me, and they know that they can take me out with a Dragon Claw. Plus, Burning Bulwark can't burn it because it's fire type, but what I can do is actually go ahead and commit the Terra here. I'm going to go for the Terra Fire, and essentially the reason for that is because losing my Dragon type, I'm no longer weak to their Dragon Claw, and since even though they are faster, I can then take an attack and then hopefully fire off a Dragon Claw and take care of it. So they do obviously outspeed with that Choice Scarf, we barely hang on with the Dragon Claw, and then we fire off a Claw in return, and we end up just knocking out ourselves. So that is amazing. Ditto being around is always a huge problem. It kind of it limits what you can do in terms of setup, but the Terra being used effectively is able to uh, kind of neutralize the threat there. So now they can bring back in the Burnt Fish, and at this point, I figure I outspeed this thing at this point, but it does in fact have the priority in the form of Aqua Jet, so... Down goes the crazy-ass Dinosaur Entei, but I honestly, I was able to make a huge difference in this match. And with this thing being burnt, it's still not as scary as it should be. So, I can free switch into whatever I like, and while I am running out of mods, I do have some threats in the back pocket. One of them comes in the form of these absolute amazing booty cheeks, which is going to be the Feraligator. So, the Gator's actually in a really solid position to go for that Dragon Dance. Knowing that they're likely just locked into a burnt Aqua Jet, I can just kind of dance all day long. And it essentially just forces them to have to switch here. So they're going to go ahead and switch into the Basque Legion. And while this thing is pretty damn menacing looking, I'll tell you who's even scarier is a Sheer Force Life Orb for Alligator with a Dragon Dance. So that's going to give me a nice little plus one in both attack and speed. And at this point, we obviously outspeed and we do even have the coverage with the Crunch. So Thick Old Fish is not going to have a fun time with the Crunch. And he's even more dead than he was before. You give, him, give him double ghost type. So... That is exactly why we like to carry the crunch coverage on the gator, and now they're down to the two Pokemon. So, in comes Claude Sire, and uh, Mr. Hanky over here does have solid chip damage to the point where a plus one Ice Punch should be able to take care of it, and down goes the Claude Sire. One of the only matches where Claude Sire hasn't been an absolute asshole the entire time, and for Alligators out here putting the team on his cheeks. <laughs> so their final Pokemon, gonna be that Barrascuta, who the entire match has been having some pretty harsh vibes being burnt over there. However, uh, I do actually just outspeed, I can go for another crunch, and that is going to take care of it. Take a nice little bite out of the pretty well-cooked fish, and that's going to be the end of the match. So, I thought that was just a super fun game. Always interesting going up against Rain, um, and I'm having a lot of fun with these these new options here. Let me know what you guys thought. Also, if there's anything that has come in, like returned in the new DLC, or any of the new Pokemon, let me know what you'd like to see me kind of highlight next, and uh, I'll, I'll take a look. Thank you guys again very much for watching. The support is amazing. Don't forget to leave a like, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.